Dear students, today we are going to understand or rather characterize differentiable convex functions. So in some sense, we are first going to understand the very nature of convexity as I will show you that in some sense convexity is fundamentally a one dimensional thing. Suppose you take a function f from u to r where u is a subset of rn and it is a convex set, then take any x and x0 in u and then construct the function, this x and x0 is fixed and then construct the function phi from 0, 1 to r given as phi lambda is equal to f of x0 plus lambda x minus x0. So, this is also in u because of the convex combination. Now, please understand phi now becomes a function of lambda. So, phi as a function of lambda on 0, 1 on this interval 0, 1 is a convex function. Now, this proof of this is not a very difficult one to do because uh, let us choose two points lambda and lambda 2 in 0 and 1 and just try to see whether we can prove convexity of phi from the convexity of f. f is already given to be convex. Now, now you take a convex combination of these two elements mu of lambda 1 plus 1 minus mu of lambda 2 where mu is between 0 and 1. These are real number. This is just normal multiplication. Right. And uh, now phi of mu lambda 1 plus 1 minus lam mu lambda 2 is x naught and instead of lambda I am using this whole thing because that is the definition. Now once you do the manipulation I can write the thing as mu of x naught plus lambda x minus x naught plus 1 minus mu of x naught into lambda 2 x minus x naught. Okay. So once I do that now I can apply the convexity of f itself to write that this expression this expression itself, this expression by convexity is less than or equal to mu of f of x0 plus lambda 1 x minus x0 plus 1 minus mu of f of x0 plus lambda 2 uh, x minus x0. So, what I have? So, mu of this is by definition phi of lambda 1 plus 1 minus mu of phi of lambda 2 which proves that f is um, this phi is convex function on the interval 0 1. You can try out the following problem which has a if and only if part means. So, let us consider e a function f from Rn to R be a given convex function. And now you take any x and h in Rn, does not matter, fix them. Define a function phi, actually I should to be very precise, I should define the function uh, phi such that I write it as phi xh x h here x and h because if you change the x and h the structure of phi would change right because what is happening you are having x and x and h you these are fixed and you are just changing the t so phi t is f of x plus t h now once you change x and h you change the t hmm. once you change x and h you are changing you are changing the t when you, once you change the t uh, you are changing the value of phi t but once you change x and h the whole structure of the function phi t would start getting changed, right. So, basically this, this function is a family of functions depending on your choice of x and h. So, it does not matter whatever x and h you choose, once you fix x and h, this function phi t is a function, this is a convex function from r to r, once you know that a func f is a func convex function from rn to r. Here I have written phi t is a convex function on rn, but I am sorry, it should be just r. Now, on the reverse, if you have a given function f such that for any x h in Rn, the function phi is a convex function, it does not matter whatever x and h you choose, when you write it like this, this function phi t is a convex function, then the whole function f is a convex function from on Rn, right. That is what you have to prove. It is not a very difficult proof, you can try it out. So, our next idea is to completely characterize differentiable functions. First, we will do for uh, a convex function from R to R, then using this characterization that we have learned in this problem to actually do a characterization from Rn to R. So, so what is the result? So, let us read the result. So, if you take phi from Rn to R, be a differentiable function, then phi is convex if and only for any x, y that you choose in R. 
phi of y minus phi of x is greater than or equal to phi dash of x minus y minus x. Phi dash of x into y minus x. You can immediately understand that the generalization of the results look very similar that of convex function f from Rn to R. A, a differentiable function of f from Rn to R is convex if and only if fy minus fx is greater than or equal to the same thing, same idea, but instead of multiplication, you since you are now using vectors, you will replace it by inner product. So, grad fx into y minus x. The simple multiplication is generalized into the vector setting as inner products. So, it will become fy minus fx is greater than or equal to grad fx into y minus x. So, let us see how we can prove the first part and then we go into the second part. So, you can immediately understand once you have the convexity of phi for any x, y element of R and any lambda between 0 and 1, you can say why I am not taking 0 or 1. The reason is that we have to take a limit. You could take 1 also, there is not a problem. But at the end, you have to, to, take, to prove the result, you will see that we need to take a limit lambda going to 0. So, instead of taking lambda between the closed interval 0, 1, we choose it between open interval 0, 1. But because of the convexity of phi is already guaranteed, this result anyway holds true for whatever lambda you choose between in this interval. Now, once you know this, applying the definition of differentiability that we learned for just a single variable function in the very beginning, that this thing is nothing but phi x plus lambda phi dash x y minus x plus O of lambda. This, this is something we had learned absolutely in the beginning of this whole lecture series on derivatives, convexity and optimization. Must be several lectures ahead, many lectures actually. So, what happens is that, that that is exactly what is the meaning of differentiability. And this is exactly what we have generalized for Rn that we have discussed. So, by differentiability you would like, like, like this, where phi x would cancel with a phi x here because 1 minus lambda phi x means phi x minus lambda phi x. So, what you will get lambda phi dash x into y minus x plus O lambda is this. Now, lambda is between 0 and 1, it is not 0, you can divide both sides by lambda and then you pass through the limit as lambda goes to 0, O lambda by lambda would go to 0 as lambda goes to 0, and lambda would cancel from this side leaving us with this inequality. Now, you have to prove a converse that if you have a the fact that for any x, y in R, we have this. Then we shall show that the function phi is a convex function. So, how do you do that? The idea is very, very simple. So, you take two points x and y in R and you know that for which this expression phi y minus phi x is greater than equal to phi dash x y minus x is holding true. Now, you take any lambda between 0 and 1 and you prove that now because now you because you are going to prove convexity you have to show it for every lambda between 0 and 1 that closed interval. Here by the way because I already know that the function phi is convex I can restrict lambda to any range of the interval 0 1 1 for my own necessity it is just 0 1 here. If I had taken some 0 to lambda not lambda not strictly less than 1 then also this thing will go through. But ultimately the derivative is a very very local thing. Now what happens that I put take a z lambda like this. So then from the hypothesis because this is true for any x y phi y minus phi z lambda is greater than or equal to phi dash z lambda into y minus z lambda which will give me 1 minus lambda into y minus x. Similarly, now instead of y I take x. So phi x minus phi z lambda is greater than or equal to phi dash z lambda x minus z lambda which will give me lambda y minus x. So you will get this. So, multiplying this equation with lambda and multiplying this equation with 1 minus lambda, right? You multiply this equation with lambda and you multiply this equation with 1 minus lambda and then adding you will get that phi of z lambda, but this part, this side, if you multiply this with lambda into 1 minus lambda, if you multiply lambda into 1 minus lambda, right? Uh, so, here, okay, 1 minus lambda, lambda. So, there is a little mistake here. This difference 
just a moment please this difference here this would be x minus this would be uh, this is what lambda y minus x this is 1 minus lambda x minus y so when i multiply this by lambda here this will become lambda 1 minus lambda minus lambda 1 minus lambda phi dash z y minus x. So, this, there is a printing error here this is x minus y this is not y minus x please note a printing error here this is x minus y. So, here phi x minus phi lambda is this. So, when you add now you multiply 15 by lambda and, and 16 by 1 minus lambda and adding you will get this. As this so you will get because this side will cancel up to 0. So, you will have phi of z lambda is less than or equal to lambda phi y plus 1 minus lambda phi x. So, you have proved that phi is a convex function. Now, to prove the second part you do not need to bother much you just have to write phi t as x plus t y minus x. So, x is a vector and x is x and y minus x is h here. So, knowing what we have just learned about convex function we know that phi 1 minus phi 0 is greater than or equal to phi dash 0 into 1 minus 0. And what is phi dash t? We have already learned while we are learning mean value theorem. Phi dash t is grad of f of x plus t y minus x then again differentiate with respect to t it will give you y minus x. So, in the inner product form. Now, this phi dash t when you put t is 0 you will get grad f x into y minus x. So, what is phi 1 here? You put phi 1 it is f y where it is phi 0 it is f x. So, then in 17 you, you are putting the values of phi 1 and phi 0 you will get f y minus f x is greater than equal to f x into y minus x because phi dash 0 is f x grad f x into y minus x and this is 1 minus 0 which is 1. So, So, what happened that we have proved this fact we have concluded. Now, for the converse you again go back and do what you have done for the single variable case construct that z lambda and do the same trick you will get the answer. Now, let us come to the problem. There is a mistake again here in the printing because too much of typing things get little off the track. The problem says that if you have a differential function then you have to prove that f is a concave function if and only if this happens the inequality now changes for all x y in R n. After this we come to another characterization using the derivative which is called monotonicity and this characterization is very important for economists to know we will say why. So, it will give you a complete characterization of a concave and convex function. So, let us take our differentiable function again. So, function is convex if and only if the inner product of the gradient of f y minus gradient of f x into the vector y minus x must be always greater than or equal to 0 for all y x. The function f is concave if and only if grad f y minus grad f x is what into y minus x the inner product is less than or equal to 0. So, you see concavity and convexity is just nothing but a change of sign you put a minus here you in this equation 18 you need to put a minus then immediately you will get this equation because minus of f because minus of f is then a concave function so minus of grad of minus f minus grad of minus fx into y minus x will be less than or equal to 0. So, these are basically very symmetrical things. So, convexity and concavity are the symmetry. So, that, that is something you need to keep in your mind. So, let us see how we do the proof. 
just we are proving for the convex case you can try for the concave case so for the concave convex case write down these two things two equations because you know already that characterization of a differentiable convex function is that for any x y you take f y minus f x is greater than or equal to grad f x into y minus x and if you can now replace the row of x and y and you will have that f x minus f y is greater than or equal to grad f y into x minus y adding up the above two inequalities we immediately get this inequality the 19 the one which is this inequality this inequality is called the monotonicity property of the gradient now a gradient is always a monotone function it, it's, it has this monotonicity property we will see why we are calling it monotone when we come to real the real case so now how do i do go for a converse now we have learned about mean value theorem here we have learned lecture one it should be that the mean value theorem that we have learned in section one not lecture one section one of this lecture or this chapter now using the mean value theorem we learned that whenever that f y minus f x is equal to here i have put a greater than equal to it will be equal to so please take down the correction that i am telling so in this line number 20 you will have equal to there are certain errors so f y minus f x is equal to grad f of x plus lambda y minus x into the vector y minus x the difference between y and x so this is a element lying strictly in the strict line segment between y and x the open line segment now again by the monotonicity property which holds now for every x y i can put instead of y this and in leaving x this so i will have y plus lambda y minus x into x so you will have basically 1 minus lambda would come out here and then come out of this inner product and, and you divide by 0. Since lambda is between 0 and 1 now, since lambda is between 0 and 1, basically then you be, that is why you can now divide. So, 1 minus lambda is greater than 0, that is why you can divide it by 1 minus lambda. So, immediately once you do this, you will have this and then because this is equal to fy minus fx, this expression, this side mean value theorem it will not be greater than or equal to it will be equal to i am very sorry it will be equal to in 20 so using 20 i will have an equal to and so this part is equal to fy minus fx so fy minus fx now from this equation is greater than or equal to grad fx into y minus x so f must be a convex function because this is true for any pair y and x right so let us see in the real case what happens so in the real case it means phi dash y when phi is a function from r2 or a convex function then phi dash y minus phi dash x into y minus x is greater than or equal to 0. So when y is bigger than x phi dash y is bigger than phi dash x. This means convex functions defined on a real line has an which is differentiable convex function defined on a real line has an increasing slope non-decreasing in many parlance but I would not like to call it increasing and the, the increasing one is something which I would like to call strictly increasing. So in, in fact this is how general convex functions are viewed by, by economists. So a concave function would have a decreasing slope. So if the function phi is twice differentiable it simply means that because the derivative is an increasing function the second derivative must always be greater than or equal to 0 and this property as we will show in our next lecture will completely characterize con twice continuously differentiable convex functions. So thank you have a nice evening.